39 days to stop the mad left. It's over to you, Australia, and we're on the front line each and every night with an A-grade panel, including the great Mark Latham, the leader of One Nation in New South Wales, Peter Gleeson, Mr Queensland for us here at Sky News and representing the Labor Party because Albo's not woke, none other than Joe Hildebrand, Captain Planet from Parts Unknown in the News Corp family. All right, so, uh, Gleeson, I'll start with you. Um, I'm sure those hits will be played at the next DJ Albo conference, but what a terrible start to a bloke who's apparently 10 points in front and already ready to call himself Prime Minister. The business cards are being made up right now at uh, at Quick Copy. Paul, it reminds me of 2004 in Queensland when the then Liberal leader Bruce Flegg was asked the question, who would... Uh, be the dominant partner in the coalition between the Nationals and the Libs if they won. He couldn't answer it and Peter Beattie steamrolled him after that. He never, ever recovered. It was on the first day, was in the first seven minutes of a press conference. And I, I look at yesterday and I think about, OK, this is the guy that wants to be the Prime Minister of this country. And on the most basic and fundamental economic issues you can you could ask a year 12 economic student those questions and they would without question get them and i think to myself okay why is it that the labor party opted for albo right he's clearly a plotter and i come back to this left <laughs> faction of the labor party the left faction of the Labor Party are ruining the Labor Party. We see it here in Queensland. We've got blokes like Mark Bailey, Slick Mick DeBretti, Stephen Miles. You wouldn't feed them, right? And yet they run the show up here. The same applies in Canberra. You've got a bloke like Jason Clare, who's the, the, the opposition election spokesman, who is erudite, smart, gets it. He's much more impressive than Albo. You've got Jim Chalmers, a young... You know, a bloke who who knows his stuff, and yet they 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 went for Albo. I mean, this is the problem with the Labor Party in this country now. They are beholden to the left, and they've served up Albo, who is completely, utterly out of his depth. Mark, one of the reasons why I think that first day stuff up really matters is because it's one of those things that jumps outside of the bubble, gets talked about on FM radio and is easy for, dare I say, compulsory voters to understand. How bad is this start? Um, does it mean anything when it goes for six weeks, though? Well, clearly you can't run the economy if you don't know the key economic data. And um, at the start of every campaign, every leader bones up on the key data. I remember in 04, I had a double-sided piece of paper that had every bit of information on there. I even had the name of the uh, Thai Prime Minister if I was ever asked it and, <laughs> and, and did my best to... <laughs> I never was, but um, to, to, to memorise all of that. So uh, inside a campaign, the, the first point to, to note is just how phenomenal it is that Albanese and his team made no attempt to get him across that basic information that was very likely to be asked uh, as it was uh, yesterday. So that in itself is lazy and incompetent, just in terms of political professionalism. But the bigger point about Albanese is that he's had less interest in the economy and economic policy than any Labor leader since Gough Whitlam. Because you can go back through the, the, the Parliament, uh, caucus debates, shadow ministry debates, and this guy just wasn't interested in economic data, economic events, economic policy. He was very interested in uh, left-wing factional manoeuvres, rubbing out the Ferguson left, getting the numbers here, there and everywhere. And Gleeson's point, that's ultimately how he became the Labor leader. But economic policy and debate and speeches, um, he just had no interest in it. And to not know the cash rate, not know the unemployment rate, one assumes he'd struggle with the inflation rate, the GDP and other economic figures, um, it was a terrible look and it piled on top of the uh, laziness a, um, a level of uh, disengagement with the economy that, uh, yeah, it will haunt him through the rest of the campaign, no doubt about it. But, of course, uh, Joe, it's all OK because he's got a university degree in economics. Just don't ask him about his student politics or anything else between university and today. Roll the tape. I'm absolutely across... Uh, the economy and, and what we need to do, which is why I have a practical plan to deal with the economic challenges uh, that Australia faces. Uh, I have uh, an, an economics degree from Sydney University. 
I studied both uh, orthodox economics and political economy. I spent four years there doing it, and then I became an economic policy advisor to the Hawke government. Joe, I took a few classes in film studies at the University of Western Sydney, so does that make me Martin <laughs> Scorsese? <laughs> Well, I have an arts degree from Melbourne University and even I can tell you that the cash rate is 0.1% and the unemployment rate is 4%. But, look, to be honest, this was not something that, and I can tell you this for a fact, it was not something that um, Albanese didn't actually know. He just had a brain freeze. He was rattling off a whole bunch of other figures and, in a sense, I think part of the problem was he was so busy trying to remember all these other figures he had to be able to rattle off, like the difference between inflation and wage increases, that when it came to actually asking, answering a question that should have been as simple as what is your name, um, that he sort of he went back to sort of recall it in his sort of the boxes of his mind and it just wasn't there. It just failed him at that occasion. Um, he's mortified by it, uh, both publicly and privately, <laughs> as I think everybody knows. Um, it's, there's no pretending it wasn't bad. Um, I don't think it's necessarily terminal. I think good on him for just owning up to it and saying, look, it was a stuff up. Plenty of other people have made the same mistake. Um, Scott Morrison got caught out on the price of milk and bread infamously. John Howard even offered some comfort to him. Um, but it was undoubtedly a terrible way to start the campaign and a terrible Joe, uh, front page to be splashed everywhere. Get in uh, there, today. Peter. Jo Joey, Joey, look, you know I yeah. love you. The guy sat across from Josh Frydenberg a couple of weeks ago yep. when Frydenberg mentioned the unemployment rate. I don't know. If he mentioned it a, a dozen times, times, he might have mentioned yeah. it 30 times. Yeah. That. OK. Was, I mean, what was Anthony doing? Was he sitting there looking at the lyrics for the Ramones and Taylor Swift <laughs> or was he actually sort of understanding that this was the right... I mean, and, and the Reserve Bank every first Tuesday... Uh, of no, uh, you know, in the last yeah. um, you know, 18 1. months, we've seen 0.1%. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, he wants to be the Prime Minister, mate. You know, KPIs are important. Yeah, it was, it was a massive course. screw up. And yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Like, I'm not, I'm not making excuses for not being able to say it. I guess what I'm saying is, like um, Mark really said good. before, you're used to having, there's an old Australian film. Um, <laughs> that uh, has uh, features uh, David Wenham, I believe, playing the treasurer who becomes a prime minister. He's got a piece of paper in his pocket that he always pulls out that explains the relationship of interest rates to the value of the Australian dollar. And he keeps looking at it and it's got all this scribble on it. He's trying to remember it. And that, I think, is part of the problem. I think he does know these things. He knows these things instinctively. But he was trying, yeah. because he was in that zone where he's trying to remember this full list of other stuff, when that came up, after a bunch of other questions, um, he, he just got wrong-footed. And it was and it was bad, and he's going to try to draw a line under it and move on, and that's really all he can do. And yeah. and I think, yeah, but to be honest on. about it as well. 